but you can still go live as the Zoom. And I don't know why Facebook took away the. Um, oh, it says on Facebook right now on my screen. Oh, it says on my screen too. Throw Talk is live. I just got the ding. Woo -woo. Woo, we are here. There we go. It's on. We have landed. Woo, the plane. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. All right, ladies, you can share. All right. Hold your breath. How's everybody doing? Thank you for being patient for about 15 minutes. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. We are live, 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 live. Praise the Lord. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. We will, we will invite, I see we have some ladies already here. Good evening, thank you for being patient. Yes, you found us, we are here. Hello, Diana, hello, Emma. Who else do I have? Kristen, hello, 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 and hello. Rebecca, hi, how are you doing? Yvonne, good to see you. Diana, good to see you, ladies. How are you doing? How are you doing? Welcome to the sister friends. We're coming out of the group. We did this live inside the group, and now we have come out. And tonight, we're going to talk about friendships. 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 While we're waiting for people to join us and find us, can you share one name of one of your friends in the comment section? Name one of your good friends. Name one of your good friends in the comment section. Evening, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to see you. Yes, you found us, we are here. So in the comment section, List one of your really good friends. Your really, you would call her your sister friend. Yes, you found us. We are I'm sharing. I'm sorry. I'm sharing. I'm putting it on mute for my phone. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> mm -mm, get, get. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that the baby or the oldest one? That's the oldest one. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All the time doing that, I say hi. Oh my god! Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> it's totally okay. We real. We got family. <laughs> Mia, Mike, Mia <laughs> might come. Michael might come. We never know. So we family. <laughs> possible. Possible. They're both home. So we'll see. Yeah. Later. Yeah. And, and Michael probably heard me say his name, so he'll be there in a second. <laughs> yeah, in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that way. Yeah. Yes. All righty, so we're sharing some names. Name a girlfriend. Name a sister friend. Yes, list those sister friends. Yes, good evening, ladies. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing and inviting. Welcome to our sister friend hour. Tonight, I have Twyla with me. Hello. And, hi, Twyla, and I wanna thank you for joining me this evening. Twyla is a mother of three children, two men and a daughter, a lovely woman. And um, she has been married for 24 years, correct? Mm -hmm. I get it right. She is from Ohio, have found her way to San Diego, California. And how long have you been here in San Diego, Twyla? Um, eight years now. Yes. Um, she is... Um, an amazing cake maker, baker. What do you, what is that? What's the, what is the correct name for that, Twyla? Oh, a cake decorator. Cake decorator. Okay, that's real yeah. easy. And also <laughs> she, uh, she has oh, wow. Twyla, Twyla spices. Yes, you want a pretty cake? Um, it's Twyla. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And, and then um, she has Twyla spices. So Check out Twilight Spices, and, and I want you to come back because we will another night. I'll, I will have all the women feature their um, businesses and ministries that they have. So make sure you come back for the night we show off Twyla, 
And then I have Krista, Krista Pettiford. And yep. Krista is a tech uh, by day. And then um, like the super ministry woman by night, she has, uh, what is it? Uh, Calling God's Daughters Ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, also authored to a couple of books. So I'm excited to have her with me. She has four lovely adult children. She has two mm -hmm. boys and two, they're not boys, they are totally men. And um, <laughs> two men and two mm -hmm. lovely women. And her daughter is leaving. She's spreading her wings again. I think your oldest one is the brave. She's the oldest, correct? Yeah. Daughter. Mm -hmm. She's that brave one because um, she went away, went to the military, came back, and now she's like flying her wings going to Atlanta. So how exciting. How exciting. Yeah, to join the police department. So pray for her. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Candace joining me. She is a uh, wife and a mother of a one special sweet little girl, a little angel, a cheer angel, dance, yeah. cheer, <laughs> uh, drama angel. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Candace has Boxes of Love, which is a, a, an amazing ministry. So I do want you to come back and hear about that and, and, and be a part of that ministry because it is it really truly is an awesome ministry to go out and be the hands and feet of Christ. And I am Teresa Warren Johnson and I am Girl Talk. Thank you for joining me. Um, before I get started, today I went on this, this drive around town and they all live in different areas, literally <laughs> different cities. So I went on a drive and I dropped off gifts at everybody's door so they could open them up so you could see their gifts and they're gonna open them up and let you see what I gave them today. All righty, ladies, you may do it. Go for it. All righty. Present. Yes. Hi, Corey. Hi, ladies. How are you doing? Thank you for joining tonight. Thank you for uh, sharing and inviting. Okay. So these, this is here. <laughs> um, cards, yes. Don't mind the open bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have this thing with candy that when I see it, I eat it. And this it's beautiful man. Whoa. Yes. This is so cute. So yes. cute. And I, I couldn't, you know, I had to be my own sister friend. Too. And chocolate. Yes. And it's so I so figured, gorgeous. I figured since I like M&Ms, we'll just start off with M&Ms. So I asked them what flavor they liked or what type of, uh, M&M's they liked, and that's what they got in their bag. All righty. This is adorbs. Can I, is that a yeah. word? Can I say that? Yeah. That's adorable. It is. It is a very <laughs> cute mug. Look at and that. And I, I just want to thank you, ladies. <laughs> I do. I want to thank you, ladies, for joining me and doing this adventure with me. It is going to be a fun, fun ride. A fun ride. Um, I'm going to pray us in, and we're going to get started. All righty. So All right. Phone, so my phone don't keep beeping. Um, let us pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for a new day. I thank you that you woke us up and that we were able to make it through this day. Lord, I just ask that you bless our time together. Lord, I just ask that you use us as your hands and feet. And I thank you for friendships. I thank you that we can have friendships all over the world. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter shape, size, color, or anything, Lord. But I just pray that you unite us together in an absolutely amazing way that we use this platform to lift each other up to encourage to inspire lord i just ask that the holy spirit just do well with all of us lord i find i pray that this place be a place that women can share that women can grow together lord grow in friendships grow where we're getting on planes to go see each other so i thank you lord i thank you for friendships i thank you for that gift bless this evening in your name i do pray amen Amen. 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 So I want to start with this. Friendship was originated by God. What do you think about that? And it started with Adam and Eve. They had a friendship. And it started in Genesis. And they were a husband and wife. But the difference with us is we are all women. So this is a different friendship. We're sister friends. And so tonight, I have questions. And we're just going to engage and... Um, 
also you can engage. So we asked a question and you can jump in as well. So we're gonna start with question number one. And that question is, and any of you guys can jump in and who wants to start it out. Who was your best friend when you were growing up? And what was their, what was your favorite thing about them? Who was your best friend growing up? And ladies out there online, who was your best friend growing up? And what did you like about them? All right, who's going first? I'll go first. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. My best friend uh, growing up, uh, her name was Lanise um, in Toledo, um, Ohio. And my favorite thing about her was she <clears throat> was um, she was funny, but she was she was like the opposite of me. So um, that kind of drew drew me to her, and I'm not even sure why. I guess opposites do attract. So, um, but she was uh, really uh, girly, prissy, um, and I wasn't at the time. So it was like she was just fun to be around. You know, she liked makeup. I didn't like, so it was just, um, we just have fun. Cause we, you know, I show her stuff. She'd show me stuff. All righty. My best friend growing up, her name was Christine. Um, and I liked about her that she was, she was really bossy, but in a good way. <laughs> so like, kind of like Twyla was saying, she just was my complete opposite. But man, she was, she could keep a secret. Like you could talk to her about anything and it was just fun. Like I remember just always being at her house for like, I'd leave school on Friday and I'd be at her house till late, late, late night on Sunday to come home, shower and go to school Monday and I was back at her house again. <laughs> Christine was my nice. best. Nice. Krista? Um, I would say Elizabeth. And um, I think that what drew me to her was that she and her mom were very eccentric and um, they were part, she was a part of the performing arts and so was her mom. And she was, I think her mom was more like um, a hippie who had to, you know, go ahead and start working and get a life because now she had a daughter. And so it was very different from my upbringing. And, um, you know, with everything that's going on right now, let me just say that she was also white. And so I would go over and we would do different things and she would come over and we just really got along and connected. But I love um, the freedom that she had to express herself in different ways because of that um, free flowing mother, if you will. And so and not that I didn't like the structure of my house, but it was just different. Um, yeah, seeing a, a single mom that was just free and yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, my best friend was my cousin. I grew up on the farm, so we were always together because we just lived. Our house. You walk out the door, we were pretty much in each other's houses. And she is probably a month and a half older than I am. Bossy, loud, sassy, everything that I wasn't, it was her, you know. And um, even though she had an older sister, I just was like, that's my sister too. That's my, that's my best friend. We went to school together. Like literally we went from, and I only went to four schools and they were all right there in the neighborhood. So we went to school together. We did everything together until we graduated and got married. So yeah, I would consider her my best friend. And I think like Krista said, she was just different from me. She was feisty. You say something, she was ready. She was going to fight. Like <laughs> she was going to throw down. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're not doing that. Um, and she just had that, um, she had tenacity, just different than me. And just, I love the sassiness of her. Okay. So let me share something that was posted. Um, Laura, Laura says her name is, her friend was Christine and we had a good time together. We always was there for each other. Norma, Nina, we knew each other since elementary school. Betty had a friend named Debbie and they were um, up with people back in the day, singing tours. I guess they traveled around the United States together um, and God was always the center and they liked horses and boys. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keisha. <laughs> Keisha had a friend, and her name was Audrey, and we love to be creative, laugh, and uh, true sisters. Diana had a friend in high school. Her name was Kathy, and she was funny and made me laugh all the time. So I have a question, ladies, to everyone. Do you still stay in contact with your friend now? When's the last time you talked to your friend, that friend? Can I go first? Because yes, I, I, I was going all the way back to um, elementary. So by the time I got out of elementary, let's go to middle school. <laughs> okay. So middle school, that was different. And I haven't talked to Elizabeth in quite some time, but middle school, it was kind of like, um, I would be doing a disservice if I didn't mention my sister, Pam, who's two years older than me and my cousin, Tisha. And then we met someone named Nisha. And I don't know if they're watching tonight, but yes, we're still all in contact. And we were like ride or dies. Me and Nisha went to school together and Tisha went to a different school and the Pam went to a different school, but we all ended up just hanging out and, um, you know, this is going to tell me a little bit. Um, we would ditch oh. Nisha's house. <laughs> You were what? <laughs> ditch school at Nisha's house. Oh, and she would take okay. Car. This is middle school. Like, yeah, it was like, wow. So, um, oh, that's what that girl you were. Fun. That's and we had the, and my cousin Tish was like, we got we got our hair cut back in the day when bobs were done. And so she was like, I got mine cut, so you have to get yours cut because you get the, you know, because you cut off all your hair and all this. So it was like, okay, that loyalty, like, okay, so I cut my hair off because you cut yours off and so that type of craziness but we loved each other and we still are really um close we don't get to see each other as much as even though it's my cousin and my sister i see a lot but nisha and yeah. my cousin we talk all the time and if something happens and we show up for each other and um yeah so those are still my girls yes all righty twyla and candace do you still talk to yours see yours I don't. Um, she, I think she lives uh, maybe in Columbus. She went through a lot of uh, health issues, uh, mental health issues. And um, so I haven't talked to her since it's probably been about 15 years almost. Okay. All right. Candace, yours? No, there was a giant falling out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> we connected on Facebook for like 32 seconds, and it was, the season had passed. We'll say that. <laughs> All right, because I was going to throw a challenge out there to some of you ladies. If you have not reached out to your friend that you had back in the day, I encourage you to reach out to them, maybe have a phone conversation, maybe you still remember their birthday, send them a card, or if they're close by, make a day and go have coffee and take a picture, okay? Wow, okay. Just, just in, you know, just I'm want to encourage my you. Up. <laughs> yes, all righty, and take a picture, <laughs> take a picture, and hashtag sister friend, okay? All righty, so my next question is, when have you invested in a friendship that hasn't been good for you? Whether it was beginning of time or even now, when have you invested in a friendship that what hasn't been good for you? Mm. I went first the last time. Oh. <laughs> okay. We're getting deep quick, number two. All right, I'll go. Well. <laughs> um not that long ago it was one of those things where you just wanted to be there I wanted to be there for her just because I felt bad you know what I mean I felt like there was no one else there for her so I wanted to be there for her and whoo no it was not good for me you know, okay that, that constant uh putting your neck out there and just kind of that that cycle um, it, it ended up not being good for me at all. Okay. Mm, I'll go. I'll, I'll try and leave names and all of that out. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I will say that, you know, one of the things was thinking that someone was a friend. And when I was going through 
a really hard time probably about five or six years ago with my children. So you get really distracted. My teenage um, son had started going through stuff and it was like, it was used against me in judgment. And then there were things whispered behind my back. Um, and that eventually came out and God just told me to go to that person and say, you know, forgive me if I have done something, even though I knew I hadn't and I knew what was going on, but God told me to do it in a way that made me blameless and to let it go. And it really bothered me because, you know, you want, so we were sisters in the Lord and you want support, you know, and we had been, you know, good friends and had done a lot of things together. And it was just like, where where is there's you know judgment versus support and it's like yeah so it was it was kind of it was devastating kind of but you live and you learn and you forgive and you move on yeah yeah because it was like in your worst moment really like i'm having to deal with this (laughs) from somebody i thought was like one of my best friends at the time Mm -hmm. so yeah but I digress. Let's keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, I had I, a, that's I, why she gave us chocolate, y'all. She yeah. knows. Girl, where's my chocolate? Yes. If you want to eat it, she gave us chocolate. I know. You can eat it. You can I know. Eat it. We're gonna start nice and light, and then deep tears. So here's some chocolate. Oh my god. So go ahead and open up your chocolate, okay? Here I am. Open it up live right now with y'all. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I'm drinking water, so that's gonna have to do chocolate and water. You know, it's a balance. <laughs> It's mm-hmm. a balance. We're good. Okay. You know, I had a friendship and it was during a hard time. We both were going through a hard time, mili- both military wives. And I was just, I was trying to hold her up, you know? And that was hard. I was drowning. She was drowning. I sure didn't know how to swim. She sure didn't know how to swim, but it was just, <laughs> and we were both kind of going through the same thing. And I was in the healing, like I felt God pulling me to the healing process. That's not what she was. And it was just like, when I would be with her, it was like, I was reliving it all over. So I just, you know, it, I had to part ways. I had to put boundaries up, love her to this day. Um, sweet woman, strong, but it was just, I was trying to hold up the whole time. And I was drowning with her every time I'd come join her. It's like, I just get pulled down. Um, so I did, I had to put the boundaries up. So yeah. All right, Twyla. <laughs> and you well, can say you can say pass if you want. No, no. Okay. I no. um no, we're not pass. The last friend. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna talk about the friend because I also have an issue. It was a friend slash family, but we'll leave them out. So the last friend, um, I when I lived in Columbus. Um, I had started a little league football and cheerleading organization in my neighborhood. And um, we, me and this one girl was, we were really close friends, so I thought. And she and her, her significant other decided to lie to the parents um, and say that I was stealing money and all these other things because they wanted, she wanted to take over. Wow. So um, it ended really bad because I couldn't believe that, you know, she would do that. I thought we were on the same wavelength, the same page. We were about the kids, you know, the community, giving the kids something to do. And they had other um, arterial motives and um, incidentally you know because God don't like ugly what she accused me of which was false her mom wound up doing it in real life and the team folded like I stepped down and gave it up and then like it just went down from there so but that was probably the worst friend you know breakup that I'd had in a while. Okay. And that does sound like a tough one, especially when it really comes out, like it truly yeah. came out. Yeah. 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 And, and friendships are hard. I mean, you know, they are. So I'll ask you this question, and, and this is for all of us. 
Yeah, somebody said she was jealous. Yeah, I'm sure, probably so. But you know, those friendships, they scar you. You know, that, like that's, I think that's the beginning of the shield. I don't know if the shield is here or if the shield is from your feet up where it's half up, where you just like, mm, you know, I, yeah. I'm not sure if I want them. I don't want them, and, you know. And how many of you, out of all of us and online too, how many times have you had that friendship where you were hurt? Where you, you know, you got hurt in that friendship. You start Everybody. looking at new friendships in the same lens as the pain from the other one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, however deep you were, I know for me, it was like, I'm not getting that deep again. Yeah. You know, I was so deep, so invested. And then that's where the pain hit. And it's like, ooh, uh-uh. So then the next opportunity for a friendship, you're like, no, thanks. I've gone that <laughs> yeah. deep. I hurt that bad. No, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then you, that, that yeah. shield starts to get thick because yeah. you start to push and push. And then it's, yeah, yeah. Definitely start looking through the perspective of the pain, of the hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It, it led me into a season of isolation. Mm -hmm. And so that's not yeah. really good where you're doing just enough to get by and saying just enough to get by, but you're not really connecting with people because for one, at the time, like I said, there were things being said. And so people were looking at me. It was, I don't want to get into the space it was in. Right. <laughs> I'll leave that out. But those things were really, it was just really a time for, uh, it just made me isolate and kind of, you know, stick to my withdraw withdraw yeah. and that's not good and so having to I know I think it's coming up in the questions push present myself push myself back out and yeah. and trust again and and want friends again and work toward that became something I had to work at mm -hmm. and you start and, to doubt yourself you're like yeah. what I do mm -hmm. that person was comfortable enough to hurt me or what did I say and then I know for me, it all like super selfish. I, it all becomes about me. Like, what did I do? <laughs> yes. How could I have done better? Like, and then you, mm -hmm. that, that hamster starts spinning and then you're like, yeah, I'm done with women. All done. They're not nice. <laughs> That's why women are always done with women. They don't have women friends. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, you and don't. It's like you do, you start <laughs> spinning and it's like, wow. And then the devil, of course gets in all them little cracks and starts moving here. It's like, I'm just not going to have friends. I don't even care. I don't know. If yeah. I'm and imagine well, leading women's ministry and <laughs> not being able to connect with women because you, you know, said it. feeling like they can't, you know, they don't understand me or that maybe some of them are wondering why I'm in that position because you know, people are looking at the situation I'm going through, but I didn't call myself. So dealing with all the things that you think people are saying, the right. things that people are saying that are being said and all of those things and having to then lead women just becomes like, but you feel, it made me feel very alone. Like, yeah. okay, I have to minister and I think half of y'all don't like me, you know, so it's like, <laughs> And y'all not presenting anything different. So I feel really, I felt really yeah. alone and yeah. for a while. So, yeah. But you know what? You hit it right on the head. I was trying to, I was looking for that intro in there, but you hit it. I mean, here we are. We're women of God. We all have, we're trying to do ministry, period. Just even going to women's ministry, just showing up for a Bible study. But we're carrying in scars from other women, you know, scars that we've not from other women, but scars that we've attained in some friendship battles. And it makes it hard for us to do women's ministry together, mm -hmm. even wanting to because of friendship. Anybody? Anybody want to dialogue about that? Because you do, you feel isolated, you go by yourself. And then, if, and then the thing will be is if you go by yourself, not I'm taking myself out of that ministry leader role, you go by yourself and then nobody don't talk to you. So, you know, like, then again, I'm not going back. You know, I'm not <laughs> going back. We didn't connect. You only gave it one chance. You know, I have to go tell myself, 
Teresa, you <laughs> only did it one time. What are you talking about? You're not going back. But how many has experienced that? Well, you don't want to go back and do it. Um, Kristen said, I've lost the closeness of several friends as I grow in Christ. I still, um, I'm still friends with them, just not the level I used to be. Though my, through my faith, I've maintained and grow in my friendships with other sisters in Christ. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, growing up, I was so bad, bashful and introverted. I did not know how to make friends or have friends. And that's interesting. Are any of you introverts? I am. <laughs> I'm probably and, like and, a poster child for an introvert. <laughs> so can you guys identify with her of being, you know, where you, you are bashful and you don't know how to make friends? And so. Oh, yeah. And I'm super awkward. And unfortunately, being an introvert, it's like people almost assume that you, you're mean. Like, I've had people tell me like, oh, I didn't think you were nice or you talked. I'm like. But I didn't know you. Why would I talk to you? <laughs> Case in point, the one sitting right there. Anyway, we'll talk about that story another oh, time. Well, which one are you pointing at? You, oh, madam. You're not pointing at me. No. Oh, me? You, madam Fifi. But <laughs> sometimes introverts get a real bad rap. So, Cindy, I feel you, sister. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so, hold up. So, hold up. Let me explain. Let me uh -uh. explain. Let me get my chocolate. <laughs> I'm out of chocolate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That means you just ate your bag. It's a hot but, Okay. With Candace, how I met Candace, well, first of all, <laughs> I taunted her. She didn't know who I was. I knew who she was because I was leading a ministry and she started talking to me through Messenger. And I figured out who she was and she had no clue because all I was at that time, I was just the ministry talking to her. So she didn't know who I was. So I just kind of played along with it because she did, but I talked to her literally every day on purpose just to make conversation with her. Notice how she said she taunted me, friend. friend. <laughs> that's, that was the nice way. <laughs> right, that's and why so, you give me chocolate now. <laughs> and so then uh, we go to a, the church had a, it was like a faith baseball Padre game where all of us got invited. So we went, but I knew her husband because we served together at eight o'clock. I didn't know. I, I didn't. We never. I don't know. We never thought Michael had a wife. And I, he's the opposite. He talks yeah. all the time. So he's talking <laughs> to us, and we're we're on the other side of her. He's looking past her, talking to us, and we're like, "Dude, like, okay, she's your wife. Why do you keep talking to her? Y'all want a hot dog? No, no." And she's sitting there the whole time, all quiet. Never said a word. Never said a word to us. Didn't even look her. at us. She I gave us her, her back. So yes, that was Candace. <laughs> I don't even, she came to the ministry and then it just like, it bloomed. And look, now she won't stop talking to me. So that's how it works, <laughs> friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I have an introvert story. Wait a minute. Okay, go for it. Okay, this might go, this might get a little serious, but I was just thinking, uh, and I'm getting comments on my page because I shared it as well. So I'm okay, go them. for it, it's okay. And someone said that they were, um, that they feel like in Christ where she doesn't consider friends because you can get hurt, but family. And so I like that perspective. Like that is that when you look at it as family, like your family is going to hurt you, but you still have an obligation to love them. But um, that being said, I think I was an introvert. And then also I felt like people thought for me, I was already an introvert. I already had, um, what is it called? Self-esteem issues. And so <sighs> I feel like that people always thought I had, I was so well put together. Like, you know, you're so well put, you, you know, that's something I always get. You're so pretty. Yes. And it's like, sis, I'm bleeding here. Somebody help me. And so it was like, for me, I'm, I'm loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's like, and sometimes when people put you in that box or they think that you're like, you know, like you don't need help because after all you're leading ministry, it looks like you have this perfect life. And so you get it from all these different sides. So like, can I minister to you? If you just ask me how I'm doing, I might cry you a river, but you're scared <laughs> to ask me because you, or maybe you think that I'm doing fine, or maybe there's something about me that looks like I think like I don't need help. And I struggled yeah. a lot with that as well, because don't judge a book by its cover. 
And yeah. so that's one of the things that I had to break through as well. And I had to show myself friendly. So it says, the, the Bible mm -hmm. says, if you want friends then show yourself friendly. So I had to break out of that shell and not think what people might be thinking. And even if they were thinking that, let them know that normal real person <laughs> over here. And, and um, I want friends. So that was, yeah. And I love that. <laughs> Just ask me how I'm doing. That's all I want you to do. And then from there, we can be friends. I like chocolate. You like chocolate. You like cake. I like cake. You like coffee. I like coffee. You know, like, now we got a friendship. Let's do this. You like to go shop? I like to go shop. You want to go walk? Sure. Will you walk with me at 345 in the morning? Sure. You know, what about it? Like, come on. You want to take your Friday? And be on Facebook, yes. right? Yeah, right. We can be weird it, together, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Come on. right? <laughs> hey, what kind of friend? Bring um, drive around town, deliver cups so you can have it. Yeah, you know what? And then go. Will you? Will you come on Friday night live with me? Like what kind? Yes, that's Love it. it. You got me with the cup. You had. <laughs> yeah, this guy's cup. You had me with the M and M's. I mean, like okay. But I love about um, how we met because I was cleaning today and I found this note that Candace wrote me <laughs> and, it, mm. and it talked about how basically who would have known I met Candace in altar call. Candace wasn't quiet. <laughs> By then but I had found was, the Lord so we were good. <laughs> oh okay. So I met her in altar call and you know, you, you don't see the God ordained friendships forming. They just kind of organically just, they just happen, you know? And I met Teresa at Sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I tried to attend Sisters um, in the evening and in Vicky's group. We were doing oh, the first The first, yes. I this and I'd seen Amanda and I'd seen Teresa around, but I had never talked to her. And then yeah. that's when I kind of got connected with you. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember. Because yeah, you were out, you came to church late. Because I was always early. You came later. Yeah. So I would be leaving. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. But you just said that. I want to talk about moving, shifting a little bit. Those friendships that are in the Bible, what is those, that, one, that one friendship in the Bible that, that truly was a godly friendship that stood out to you guys? You want to name ooh, one? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, go for it. <laughs> That's Sorry. the introvert. Y'all see the introvert today, okay? She found the Lord. I told you, changes. She found the Lord, a mug, and some M and M's. She's that's it. That's her whole love language right there: Jesus, coffee, and chocolate. Girl, I got you, Krista. I right. got you. <laughs> you feel me? Okay. So anyway, um, Ruth and Naomi. Okay. I love them. I just, yes. I just yeah, yes. I just okay. think it was so godly. Yeah. And Ruth's name means friend. And so she was a friend to her mother-in-law. So the roles kind of reversed and she went with her and took care of her and really showed herself as a friend to this yeah. older woman. And I just, I just love their story. She was a friend. I mean, she was a ride or die for Naomi. She said, I'm my, your God's going to be my God. Your people are going to be my people. Where right. you go, I'm going. And where you die, I'll die. And the Lord do so more to me if I don't do what I just said. So. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For Any me, you ladies, was, uh, go for it. David, uh, David and Jonathan. Oh, uh, yeah. The fact that Jonathan knew... Jonathan was in line to be the king, but he knew that it wasn't him. He knew it was David. He saw the spirit of God in David's life, but he was just there for him. He gave him his armor. He told them to go hide while he talked to Saul about if he really wanted to kill him. Like the love that he had for David that even though it, he could have been jealous or he could have harbored these feelings for him since he you know, was the son and technically should have been the next king, it didn't matter. Doing God's will and honoring God and loving David was so much imp was more important. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. There's that. Their story to me is so sweet. The level of encouragement mm -hmm. and just literally being the cheerleader. 
Like Jonathan just loved they just cheered him on. Like yeah. he was 50, David was barely 20. Like nothing about their lives should have intersected. But when they did, it was so beautiful. So I'm gonna say David and Jonathan. Yeah. I don't think my people have names, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. For me, it's the the men who tore open the roof. Mm. They carried their friend mm. to the roof so he could get to Jesus. Like they they wanted him to be healed just as much as he wanted to be healed. Oh, I and, like that. Yeah. And and they were willing to, I mean, they tore up somebody's house <laughs> to get <laughs> him in there. You know, yeah. and so I like that. That that's a real friend. Like they'll do, they go hard for you. Like Candace said, that cheerleader, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, even like Naomi and Ruth were Ruth. I mean, they both like where you got. We're going to get. We're going together. We're we're doing this together. Um, I somebody said Jesus and chocolate. I think it was Laura. Love it. Jesus <laughs> and chocolate. I don't know. But maybe she was saying us. Never mind. You know, I just got it. I'm slow. Okay? <laughs> uh, Jesus um, and chocolate. Best friend. <laughs> But you know, I think about Aaron and her with Moses. Like, come on now. Here Moses is when he would get weak. Like, you know, like that's the Holy Spirit working in a friendship. Like, you know, when my, I know when my friend is weak and I got to lift them up. I got to keep their arms up. And that's like the Holy Spirit because, and you're so intertwined, but you don't even have to say anything. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just don't even have to say anything. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, some of the ladies. Um, uh, Chris, do you have anybody in your group who gave a friendship? Um, I do. I have Patty, Sister Patty Hewitt. She says she loves David and his God. And that how David was a man after God's own heart. And so he had this friendship with God. And so, yeah, I, I love that. So, yes, yes, so. yes. And that is so, so true. So true. Because David loved him. Like he had a heart for him. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was not, uh, he was kind of like prophet, priest and king, but he was well, most known as a warrior worshiper king. But he had that relationship with God that he got to see things and he got to write worship and psalms and all of that but it was out of his relationship with God like he is the um what is it poster child a poster man for <laughs> what that looks like you know um to to worship God and have him even forgive your iniquities and and wipe them away and still keep someone on the throne way after yeah. you were um, so it's beautiful yeah that she didn't I say all that but no, i'm going <laughs> you know me with david and god like the level of authenticity is so huge oh yeah like and that's a friend like someone you can like look i may look like halle berry on monday but then i look like golem on wednesday and that's okay <laughs> so, but it's just like the authenticity that david had like this is me I'm not done. I'm not finished. I'm not refined. I'm working this out. Love me. And it that's hard to do. I'm speaking yeah. to myself right now. That's really hard to do. But mm -hmm. to create a space that is so true and authentic, God is going to do amazing things. You hand him authenticity. You hand him your reality and your honesty. Like he's going to move. And that's, that's friendship yeah that, that's so good david was like that he was like he sinned and and he would go to god and be like i messed up and he because you know and the grace of god to forgive because he was so honest but he wasn't afraid of god he loved god even he said you know if i'm gonna fall into the hands i'd rather fall into the hands of god than the hands of man because i know that you're gonna chastise me but you're not going to do me like they would because you love mm -hmm. me so yeah i love david's relationship yeah. I mean, he, and, he was a loyal person anyway. I mean, yeah. he was even loyal to Saul when Saul was trying to kill him, you yeah. know? Yeah, true That's that. But he did, he, you know, and like I think Candace said it and Krista, but he, um, he was like a roller coaster. Like if you read in Psalms, he was like, one day he was literally, he's up, he's talking to God and he's like, hi, like you're the greatest. Wait a minute, hold up. 
are you, where you at? Like, God, where you at? And it's like, yes, you're the great, you're my rocket. It's just, he was like a true roller coaster. And, you know, sometimes you do have friendships that are all over the place, but he was raw. He was real. He was vulnerable. He just laid it out there. He literally laid it out there and, and did life with him. So true. So true. I love that. Yeah. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Why hast yeah. thou forsaken me, oh God? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> just he was just like all over the place um who's going in the fire with me you know Misha, Shadrach, and Abednego who going in the fire and stand with me you know like it's mm, oh yeah in case y'all didn't know all three y'all going in the fire all right I guess so in case you had in case you were wondering if I'm going in where it's a group effort wow yes. okay <laughs> like get your get your get your get your suit on yeah, suit up let's go like let's just, right. we we got mugs, y'all. We're going in fire. Okay. <laughs> what are we putting in it? Coffee or tea? I don't care. Coffee. Just get the fire. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. Okay. 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 Um, tea tomorrow, so, maybe. But coffee. Right. Right. <laughs> um, you got a quote, ladies? Do you have a, a friendship quote? And any of you ladies out there, do you have a friendship quote that um, you really, really, truly like? Who wants to share their friendship quote first? Um, I will. Okay, go for it. Um, mine is be the kind of friend that I would want. Oh. Ladies, will you write that in the comment section? Be the kind of friend, spitting peanuts, be the kind of friend that I would want. Type that in the comment section. That is a great quality to have. Be the kind of friend. Say it again, Twyla. Short knees are gone. <laughs> Be the kind of friend that I would want. Be the kind of friend that I would want. Mm. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Diana is like, I'm not sure. Oh, Desiree. Desiree says, I don't care. Just get in the fire, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Desiree, please use that. Yes. Be the kind of friend that I would want. Mm. Great place to start on friendship. Mm -hmm. My quote was, I'm going to go next. Friendship is ir is. Friendship is a irreplaceable gift from God. Mm -hmm. And I think the gift comes seasons. You know what I mean? You know, you we all have seasons. We have a friend. They're, they're there for a while. Sometimes they leave. Some, sometimes, yes, they do break off. We don't want them to. Sometimes it's painful when it breaks off. But it's seasons. You know, there's good parts about it. And, and then then it goes so yeah it's it's an irreplaceable gift from god but i think they have to right because yeah. mm -hmm. i feel like okay nothing blooms all the time yes things have to die in order for them to to be fruitful yeah so not that friendships die in the sense but if we're not moving and growing as friends yeah. then that's dirty nasty water and mm, you don't got time for that <laughs> dirty yeah. She said dirty, nasty water. Dirty, nasty water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does anybody out there in the online have a, um, have a quote, have one that you may have? Oh, I'm going to steal Phyllis's quote. Be the friend that you can call me at 2 a.m. I will answer. That's not a quote. I made it into a quote. <laughs> Phyllis credit and then you're fine. Right. And I just quoted Phyllis. Quote unquote. Okay. And this I like good. one. Oh, go, uh -huh. ahead. go ahead. Go for it. Um a friend must show themselves friendly. And there's different versions of it in the Bible, but that was something that I stuck with when I went back out to um to wanna have friends and realize that okay, now my kids are 
growing up and I thought I was fine because I was so busy, but now I need friends. And so I had to show, so if you want friends, you have to show yourself friendly and that's Proverbs 18, 24. So I was trying to find the scripture. Um, but, um, yeah, so I held on to that and it was like, you have to open up a little bit introvert. <laughs> and so, you know what I mean? So that's what that meant for me is like, okay, you know, you can't just sit there with the look on your face. <laughs> or, and nobody knows that you're doing that because like you're nervous or you're kind of just sticking to yourself. So you have to smile. You have to, you know, say hello. You have to talk when you're someplace yeah. with other women. You can't just sit in the corner. So, <laughs> so, um, so tell me that, say that uh, scripture again, ladies, type this in the comment section. Say it again, Krista. It is Proverbs 18, 24. Uh -huh. And if you go to the King James version, it says a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there right. is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Amen. Um, in the comment section, um, I want to say her name is Yana. I hope I'm saying yeah. it right. I just yeah. I don't like butchering people's name up. But <laughs> friends don't let friends uh, crowns fall. Ooh, uplift and celebrate. Friends, Diana, that's for you. Friends don't let friends crown fall. Like, girl, fix your crown. It's got, girl, fix it. Fix it. Fix your crown. <laughs> uplift and celebrate. I like that. I like that. Thank you for that one. And then Keisha says, a friend knows your weaknesses, but shows you your strengths. Ooh, I like that, that one. one. That one's good too. Yes, mm -hmm. love it, love it. A friend knows your weaknesses, but shows you your strength. Ah, and a friend loves at all times. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I'm looking oh. make sure. Patty has greater love has no one than that they lay down one's life for a friend, uh, quoting yeah. Jesus. So, yes, yes, that one is. Yeah. Desiree said, a man that has a friend must show himself friendly. Yes, which is another translation of Christians. Christus. Um, who else needs to go? Who else need, has a quote? Did we get them all? I do. It's kind of long, but. Okay. Okay, it says, sometimes being a friend means mastering the art of timing. There's a time for silence, a time to let go and allow people to hurl themselves into their own destiny, and a time to prepare to pick up the pieces when it's all over. Oh, well, that's sweet. I like mm -hmm. that. Can you read it one more time? Sometimes being a friend means mastering the art of timing. There's a time for silence, a time to let go and allow people to hurl themselves into their own destiny and a time to prepare to pick up the pieces when it's all over. Wow. Um, I'll be right back. I have some money at the door. Okay, go for it. Um, then this one, <laughs> Jill said, um, what about friends help tighten up each other's armor? Yes, please friends, mm -hmm. tighten up my armor. If my armor get a little loose, just say, Teresa, um, you need to tighten up that armor. Betty says, there are those rare jewels that get, get the earthly you. Forgive you and help you know godly directions for you. Yes, those, that's rare jewels. Um, Desiree, a friend will support you even if they don't agree with you. Yep, that's me. I had sometimes, I'm sorry, Candace. I'm not talking about you, but no, I'm teasing. <laughs> so yes, treat me, you guys. That's you cheat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and guess who's on here? Caitlin is on here. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Yes, Caitlin is here. It's been so long. <laughs> there are friends, there are family, and then there are friends that become family. Oh, I like that Aww. one. You see, all of you, everybody, like right here, my friends, and right here, all 28 of you are my friends. Love it, Caitlin. Thank you. There are friends, and there are family, and then there are friends that become family. Yes. Yes, and this is our family, and this is sisterhood. Will you do me a favor right here in the comment section? Hashtag girl, I'm sorry, not girl talk. Hashtag sister friends. Sister. Hashtag now, sister okay, friends. Okay, is it sister friends or sister? Like, I think I messed it up already. Sister. <laughs> sister. Got it. Thank mm -hmm. you. I, I didn't add that. Sister friends. I was like, sister friends? Like, sister where are we? Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> Yvonne says, bear one another's love. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yana wants to know where everybody is from. Oh, well, we're going to go for it, sister friend. Everybody type in the comment section where you are from. What states are we hitting tonight? Type that in the comment section after you hashtag um, sister friends. Ladies, it's 841, okay? Shh, it's okay. It's oh. okay. Oh, thank hey, I keep yeah, on I going something. there. <laughs> let me, let me, oh, let yes, me. I love this. I don't know where we're at, but Patty says true friends often feel more like family than friends. So I'm just hopping back in. <laughs> I love yeah, that, that one's a good one, too. That one goes with kind of like Caitlin's, too. I'm going to have to go back and grab these. I like those. Mm -hmm. So we got San Diego, we got Ramona, California, we got San Diego. Texas, North Carolina, Vegas. Ooh. Oh, who wow. You see, who you see, North Carolina? Um, Myra. Riley. My oh, Myra, okay. Myra. Mm -hmm. yeah, it just got to me. Okay. Where are y'all from out there on my feed? I know where you guys are from, but share. <laughs> oh, we got a South Carolina, whoop, whoop, North and Point, South. Yeah, Point Loma, Oceanside. Originally from Bakersfield, California, came down to San Diego, Temecula. Tijuana in the house. Ooh, do we? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Portersville, yes. Yes, Norma. Wow. Woo, 21st birthday. Happy birthday to your baby. San Diego. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Yes. Do you ladies have your um, articles? Let's go there. Do you have yeah. it? Yeah. And these are articles on friendship? Mm -hmm. Did you see that six, six cost of real friendship? It was on your email. I'm finna. Okay. We got you, girl. It's okay. It is. Okay. okay. It's okay. So I shared. I, <laughs> yes, let's give some shout out for the 21st, the uh, 21 year old. Yay, happy, birthday happy birthday to her. Happy cake day. Yes. Laura says true friends can be apart for a long time, but can pick up like they were never apart. Oh, that no, that's mm -hmm. like sweet. Oh, and that is so true and so weird, but I it love is. it. <laughs> yeah. And then you do, you're like, oh, I missed you. Like it doesn't connect. But when you do talk, it's like, girl, how's your mom? It's just right. off the back. You're fine. It's good. Yeah. Candace, you got a Lisa on here. Lisa Burt is talking to you, girl. Uh, Oh, hey, Lisa. <laughs> um, so oh. I shared an article with the ladies tonight. So we're going to kind of discuss it. And let me read a little bit. It says, while doing a study on accountability, how do you guys feel about accountability? Like, we have to be real about it. And so this article is kind of about accountability. It says, we tend to use the word friend quite carelessly. Do you feel like we use the word friends carelessly? Yes. yes. Facebook. <laughs> ugh, ugh. Yes. I have 543 friends. No, you don't. No. no you don't. <laughs> right? You don't. No. I want a new word. I don't. Ugh. Ugh. I have and like 2,000 or something. People. Like, what's a good word? Like, I can't really call you my friend, but you're not my enemy. Right. right? It's it's like we, it takes all the emotion out. It takes all like the... Huh? huh? <laughs> it's a connection or an acquaintance because yeah. a lot of people friend me that I don't know personally. And, right. yeah. and that is creepy when someone's like, oh, be my friend, but we I don't know you. I know. And I do this. Friend. And that's I will literally, you. and I will literally, that's the sad part. Like I'll leave them there for a while and be like, yeah. All the time. I check. I'm I always sorry check. Check. watching right now, but like I have people in that friend queue that have been there for over a year. So I'm like, no. I, I do too. Don't know you know what? I've been doing a lot more saying yes, 
but I check and make sure that they have a connection. But I realize that I'll eventually probably have to make another page because I have my business page for being an author. And then people like that one, but then people want to interact with me. And then so they friend me. And and so if I don't know you, it's a no. But if I have if you have like between 15 and 20 connections of people I actually know, even if it's online, that actually right. have a real connection with, then I'll go ahead and say yes. But I say but a no a lot. You wouldn't call them your friend though, right? Or do you? Right. I know I wouldn't call them my friends. I would call right. them someone who friended me on Facebook. Friended. Whole yeah. different well, situation. Yeah, it becomes yeah. like a noun and then a verb. Well, you can yeah. friend me. No. <laughs> what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah so but my friend friends are on here as well and right. you can tell yeah. the difference in the conversation because they'll just like hey sis hey girl you know it's like yeah. there's a whole different yeah <laughs> so we have, yeah we've lost so much in the meaning of friend and yeah it's not even yeah it's like you said it just gets thrown around it yeah thrown around but then it's like you throw it around but there's an assumption there that if i call you a friend that there's some type of personal intimate relationship. So I'm like, mm, we not friends. I know who you are. Like, let's, <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> okay, well, Keisha has a question. She says, do you feel that true friends are ordained? <clears throat> uh, can I? Mm-hmm, go for it. I would say that I don't know if true friends are ordained but it's just like other relationships and disciplines in the kingdom of god god gives us these gifts he says we're blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places he's given us an inheritance and he's given us the fruit of the spirit we have all these things but they're in seed form and so we have to work them out and so i know that god can create divine connections and i believe that he can like ordain something to it's like to it's like believing in soul ties i don't believe in them. I believe that if two godly people come together and their purposes line up, then they can become soul, not soul ties, soulmates. They can become right. soulmates because they can begin to walk together in agreement. But if there's just one person for you out there, what happens if that person, you know, rejects you? because they don't want the will of God. And so I think friendship is something that takes discipline and that is worked at. And as I was just looking over the article, sorry, sis, I was, but anyway, I <laughs> good thing I could read fast. Um, right. That it takes, it takes, there's so much sacrifice. So it's like a marriage for a true friendship. For acquaintance, it's something different. So I don't know if it's ordained. Uh, in a way you can say yes, but it's just like a marriage. Once two people come into that a covenant and they agree, then there's an ordination, an anointing, a bringing to a joining together, if you will, that God blesses when people right. decide to do life together. And then if they split, then there's, you know, those things. But if you're really coming together with the friendship, then at that point, all the blessings come in. I don't, does that make sense? I don't know if you guys- I, I, I think I understand you. But it's kind of like what you, uh, Yonda, Yonda says. She says, having friends and being, being in a friendship is different. Because uh, like you said, uh, Yonda, that's what I teach my kids. You, why are you calling everybody your friend? They're not your friend. Like, you <laughs> might know them. You might have went to McDonald's with them, but they're not, you know, everybody you meet is not your friend. Mm-hmm. because that friend really truly knows you mm-hmm. and again that friend might be there for a season and you guys might do life and you might mesh together but also it drifts apart and it's okay it was great why it lasted and thank you lord for it now let's we both bloom elsewhere and you can't be mad even though you do get mad let's be real when that friendship kind of do a shift one of you are going to get mad no matter mm-hmm. what that's just how it is but yeah i just yeah So let's jump into the article. It said that, it said any person we have a new conversation with, work with, or like on friendship, we call them friends. This is not necessarily bad, but uh, you you believe you're losing the real value of the meaning of biblical friendship. Tyler, you wanna read the scripture that they gave us, Mark 10? Do you see it up top? Um, it says, um, a, a genuine friendship is entirely unselfish. Is that what you're talking about? No, you see it. It is, um, 
Mark 10, 45, it says to become another friend is a true sense. Very top. No, because I printed it out and I don't have that. Okay. Do you have it, Candace? No, no, I can get Mark though. I know. Okay. It says this. I'm I'm firing all my friends tonight. Okay. Guys. I have it right here. Oh, wait, now you're gonna fire it. Right. I took my notes. <laughs> Mark 1045. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> That's because you still have it in front of her right now. That's not fair. Christy, do you have it? I do. I actually have it. Okay. You, go you, for it. Go it for says, it. To become you... another's friend in the true sense is to take another into such close living fellowship that his life and ours are knit together as one. It is far more than a pleasant companionship in bright sunny hours. A genuine friendship is entirely unselfish. It seeks no benefit or good of its own. It does not love for what it may receive, but for what it, but for what it may give. Its aim is not to be served, but to serve. Are you talking about Mark 10, 45, the yeah. actual verse? And it no, says, you no, you, you're good, but you can get it. But I love what it said. You're in this, this friendship. Your aim is not to be served, but to serve. Is that how you look at friendships, ladies? Yeah. I, you know, that is, that's <laughs> good. No, I mean, because I'm just reading Jesus's words here. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life, right. a life a ransom for many. Sorry, that was your verse <laughs> that I was supposed to read. But that is so, so, so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe I had looked at it like that, but not just right. To be honest, just right now, I had been thinking about what it would be to what it would mean to be married again and that it wouldn't be about me. You know, if mm -hmm. I were to marry again, it would have to be about serving that person mm -hmm. and doing it as unto the Lord and not taking the selfish and out, out of it. But having, but reading that come, it just came out of my own mouth is like, that's what friendship is too. And that's what you want with your spouse, but that's what you want with the true friend as well. So, right. Yeah. But, and I don't think I always looked at friendships like that. I'm gonna be real with you. I, I think yeah. I was always looking at it. What am I going to get out of it? Honestly. And if that's too much work, I ain't doing that. You know, <laughs> you know, let's be real. I'm not doing, you know, <laughs> like you're not going to suck me dry, you know, because I, again, it's about those shields that I've put up because of before. Oh, I let, you know, I laid down for that other one. I'm not going to lay down for this one right here. So I honestly, I, there were times that I'll be real with you. No, it was like, uh, uh what am I going to get from this? Or I'm not getting anything. And, and like, that was, I'm sorry, I was really convicted by it. Like, wow, I never thought of it that way. I never wanted, I don't, like, I can go back and go, I never honestly went into a friendship and said, you know, I want to serve this person. I want to love on this person. And I want to be the hands and feet to this person. And God showed me how, show me how you want me to serve this person in this friendship. No, ma'am. No, I haven't. Yeah, I think so, that's a, a revelation that, that I just, got like later in life you know yeah. what I'm saying it's like younger no you don't think like that but as you as friendships come and go I think you start to get it you know and it starts to unfold and make sense like I want to serve this person you know I, I want to be there for that person you know um yeah well, and Phyllis said, I think friendship starts when we have things in common. Because really, I think that's more. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he scared me. I just saw two. Um, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of times you have those friendships and it's like, oh, we have something in common. Let's do it. You know, oh, we'll be friends because we have something in common. So we just started being friends. But it honestly was not because I wanted to serve them. I did not get in a friendship and go oh man, I'm just going to help them out. You know, no, it was about, <laughs> you know, we had something in common, whether it was the children, because, okay, that would be like me right now. I, like I'm being real. There is, there'd be a young girl at church and she have two young children and I'm twitching because I got a 17 and a 23 year old. <laughs> like I'm twitching. Do I want to be around, <laughs> you know, and I work with little kids. But I'm, you know, in my selfish being, because it's selfish, let's be real. I don't want to go sit at the park with her. 
but right here by the scripture, go sit at the park with her. <laughs> yeah. You know, go sit at the park with her. And yeah. I think maybe in that way, that God does ordain us for certain times. But what I mean is that we have to put in the effort. God appoints us and connects us, but we have to really be yielded to that. And oh, yeah. so I, yeah, I think so. I think that looking at it, and I think of ministry as that, um, to, as serving other people. And that's how I serve the body of Christ. And I, oftentimes think of when I'm connecting with the sister who needs me or calling to check on someone and doing all the behind the scene things that, you know, you don't post and share and all of that stuff that I think of that as service, but yeah. I always, but you know, it's like, I'm, and I'm not expecting anything in return, but I hadn't really thought of like the whole friendship thing where we can have sister friends and girl talk and still, I mean, you do it, but when you put it like when you when I just put it into words, it's like sometimes we practice things without knowing it. So I'm not yeah. saying I have been selfish and not done it, but the weight of what you said and the fact that, okay, what if you don't feel like doing it, you know, yeah. one day, then you're still supposed <laughs> to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you listen to everything that you each have said, the shift happened when, when you gave it to the will of God that's the shift in the friendship and that that as you guys were talking and the question that came up that's where the ordination i think almost is is when you give it over to god so like you just said i may not feel like doing it but i know the lord wants me to speak into this woman's life i mm -hmm. know that she probably doesn't have anybody right now and he put me next to these noisy kids for a reason so i'm gonna just love <laughs> on her but you know what i mean like you yeah. put the relationship at the foot of the cross anyway and that's kind of how i was talking about with david and jonathan like it didn't matter what jonathan wanted it didn't matter he was going to do the will of god and that was him loving on david yeah True. you know i think that yeah. was for me the shift of being a friend for yeah. me versus wow i to serve you is to ask you how i can pray for you i want to know the names of your children what is going on at work that's because that's the gift God has given me is prayer. How can I use that to serve my friend? Yeah. And that's so good. Can I, can I add something from one of the, the yes, go for here? It. Uh -huh. She said, um, Patty says that Patricia, I call her Patty says the righteous should choose their friends carefully. And I mm. think that is very good because when you're going to commit to that, it's like someone, one of you guys, or maybe many of us said a little bit earlier that, you pick friends and it, you know, we talked about bad friendships. We talked about giving to somebody and not getting it back. And this is bad. This is not working because I'm sewing, 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 and we're not growing, 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 and you know, all of that. And so when you choose your friends carefully, then you know that God is in it. And, yeah. and, and then you know that it's a, a, what is it called? An assignment maybe. Yeah. Um, even though you don't want to look at people like God has called you. So I guess that is ordained to, to do this, right. so, yeah. this person. And so circling back, sorry, whoever I said no right. to, but Keisha. I think I was Keisha. speaking on our side, like God can ordain something and we don't do it. So I right. think what I meant is that we have to, we have to yield to that, but those are the ones when you choose them wisely. So I just wanted to share that. That was really good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to share what Kristen said. And Kristen is a mom of twins, a boy and a girl. And she said, becoming a mom has shown me my friend, who my friends are. The people who I thought would be there for me pretty much disappeared. And the ones I never expected stepped up and really helped me. And that was my, you know, and literally like, I think, and with that is understanding like, let's go about expectation. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we do, expect people to be there but they don't have that expectation like you want them to be your friend you want them to be loyal you want them to show up but we put that expectation on them and they don't even have it from the beginning and they're gone you know right. and then you left angry and mad but okay then god sends the but god but god sends you people that come around you and love you like you need to be loved you know come on ma'am i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yes <laughs> yeah, i mean well. he really does and you know yeah, like just in life like that's the truth like he, you will have those people who come around 
at the right time and love you, love you right through it. Love you right through it. Um, what the article said this, um, it said, maybe friends, maybe friendships are low in supplies these days because the cost of friendship, because of the cost of friendship is cost personal convenience. Do you see that in friendship? It costs personal, con personal convenience. We often think of friendships as hanging out and having fun. And that's a part of it. But the test of true, our, our, our test of love comes when our friends want to do something and need something from us. That is not so fun. This is when you must be willing to cut off your personal preferences, put them aside and value the other person as more important than ourselves. Again, it's about serving. And every one of the points is truly about serving. It costs time to serve someone. You got to give them your time. Mm -hmm. You know to who serve. your friends are because they'll help you move. For real. <laughs> but it is. But it is. It, it, relationships are inconvenient in the definition of you cannot be selfish and have a good relationship at the same time. Mm -hmm. They can't exist together. Like my marriage is only going to be good if I am serving my husband. My yeah. relationship with my friends is only going to be good if I'm if I'm selfish in them, they can't be good. So if any one of you ladies call me at two o'clock in the morning, I'm going to be inconvenienced. I was asleep, but I love you. And you called me. You need me. I am there. That's it. If I want to yeah. act selfishly, then I'm not going to have good relationships, period. Right. And can I add to that? And I think that the person that calls you at 2 a.m., would need you because they also respect and value you. So if I'm going to knock at your door, if I'm going to call you at 2 a.m. and ask for your help, then as a friend, I really need it. And so right. that's, and that's the reciprocation. Yeah. Reciprocation. Yeah, reciprocity. Thank you. I got you, Krista. Yes. I got you. Thank you. I got you, girl. <laughs> yes. And so that you have, and that's why you need that common ground and that respect yeah. uh, amongst friends. And that's why, like we talked about earlier, that sometimes you have to walk away from friendships because even in your serving, God will say you've done all that you can do. And this person, I've had that happen. It's not, you know you can't grow anymore and they can't grow anymore with you. And so when you have that friend that you know that you, that would show up for you uh, and you know that if they're calling you at 2 a.m., then let me just go ahead and get ready, you know, because whatever it is, I know that. I'm going to be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be there because I know that she's not going to call. That she's not a foolish woman. We're not playing. Right. Yeah. But that's the intimacy ready. too. That's allowing that wall to come down that yeah. you can say, if Teresa Twyla or Krista calls me at 2 a.m., it's on purpose. They didn't butt dial me. It's on purpose <laughs> because they need something. And that's and God has already worked out how it's gonna play out. But that's the intimacy. We're close enough. We've shared life together, we've cried together, we've laughed together, we've done the ugly and the beautiful so that it can happen. Mm -hmm. It can happen. And that, and it's like she said, it's inconvenient. It's hard work. It's hard work. It's not, I think I love how the article's like, it's more about coffee and games. Like it costs you stuff. Yeah. It costs. Yeah. And I think that goes back to choose your friends carefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> truly. And we're going to try to shoot for 915 to respect people's time. Okay. The next one is it costs comfort. 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 Get my words like I see it comfort. Mm -hmm. Friendship is easy <laughs> and fun when it's filled with laughter and everyone is sipping lattes and getting along. But what happens when the storm rolls into your friendship? What happens? The comfort goes out. True mm -hmm. friendship, on the other hand, forgives and seeks restoration and move forward together. That's maturity. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, because I remember back in the day, peace. You know, you tripping, I'm gone, you know, quickly. And you didn't, it was okay. Let me block you and let me keep on going. Maturity is that you forgive, seek restoration and move forward 
together. This is probably the most difficult part of true friends, truly, and that is maturing, that maturing part about it. The cost of prayer. Friends pray for each other. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. don't, do and, not pray. And it's not just, uh, not just, don't get me wrong. I call them popcorn prayers. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Prayers are beautiful. But like, if you're my friend, we're going in. Right. I'm not right. praying for your meatloaf. I'm not praying. For, no, I'm praying for your children, your grandchildren to be born. Blessings on your house. Like we are going I'm praying for you the way I'm praying for myself. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's we, that's where we at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she ain't paying for your meatloaf, but yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious, but I'm not, I'm not praying. If I can't cook, you're going to have to pray for me to cook. You know what I mean? We're just going <laughs> to give you something to eat because we're cool. We're free. Okay. We're going to bring you a plate. Like, right? Like Ready, see <laughs> Krista? Please. I'm gonna be an empty <laughs> nester soon. I'm truly gonna be an empty nester soon. So can you put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? All right. When I dish up Michael and Mia, it'll be Michael, Mia, Teresa. I got you. <laughs> there we go. Always food in my fridge. <laughs> there we go. Always. You know what, y'all? I'm gonna tell the whole world this is up. I bet you if I come to the house, oh God, here she comes. Who is that? Don't say that. Everybody be quiet. Don't say nothing. It's Teresa. Don't say that. <laughs> and not the light. She's coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Krista sharing a dog, but the dog staying at Krista's house. Just so y'all know, okay? What is that in the dog? <laughs> That's oh fine. I'll God. take the puppy. I'll take the puppy when it becomes a big dog. <laughs> that boo boo all over him. Oh, that's something. it right there. Okay, the cost of love. Sin will make itself known the more time you spend with our friends. It will come out in our lives and in theirs. No matter what ugliness you find in your friends, we still continue to love. We will at times find them to be inconsistent we'll find them to be weak we'll see the flaws but it still costs us love that we just love love hard love real love love like god does mm -hmm. that's what it's called um anything else that you guys could think of that you pulled out of the article i like to go back oh, go ahead. Sorry. i was gonna say i like the part on the intimacy Mm -hmm. How it said that friendship is designed for growth and godliness. Mm -hmm. You know, people to have miss that, that part. Huh? <laughs> people miss that part a lot, like growth mm -hmm. and godliness. Like they miss that. Because it's like, especially after reading the article and kind of prepping for tonight, it was like that revelation of it's an opportunity of an example here on earth to experience what was going to happen in eternity. If we're putting in the time, if we're putting in the prayer, the intimacy, the comfort, the love, like that's almost like a little appetizer course on earth of what we get to experience in eternity and how important that is. And I want to grow in my godliness and I can't do it by myself because then I'm going to come up with my own God, my own conclusions, my own, my own, my own. And never get to have, exercise it. Right, exactly. But to have friends to know, hey, Candace, uh, just because he didn't put the toilet seat down, like, calm down, Turbo. You know what I mean? Like, speak <laughs> into you to be like, girl, you know, close the door so Mia's room, you don't see the messiness. <laughs> so it's like, to have those those women, those friends around you to check you in love and to just speak over you, it's like, wow, that's how we get to grow in God because then God's not going to become this distant, untouchable, you know, non-intimate figure he's my god who's right here right next to me and i'm doing life with him. So i thought yeah. i really liked that part in the article yeah it took me to proverbs 27 17 patty again says as iron sharpens iron so a friend uh so friend sharpens friend a friend sharpens a friend and so yeah. what you said ditto to what you said candace and i would go back to what you spoke um prior about the uh Teresa about the um about how we mature and how true friendship grows through the problems and the issues and if I could go back to when we first started about that friendship that 
I was really broken about because I felt like, and I even said as much to the person that, you know, a true friendship, and I must have been the Holy Spirit because I hadn't experienced it, but I was experiencing it in that moment. And I said, I think that when you're friends and you have a disagreement, that you have to be able to work through that. Or are we really friends? Because if we have to agree on everything, of course, we're not talking about sin here. We're talking about disagreeing on how things are done. Then you yeah. have to be able to come through that or is it a friendship has to be strong enough to handle disagreements and bad days and still love that person and not betray or go behind or break the friendship otherwise it's not and so I think that's the growth and that's and that's what I got from the article as I scan through it it does take that commitment it does mm -hmm. make you grow and it it shows it brings out the good and it shows you where you need work <laughs> mm -hmm. but you said it you said it christ-like because it says right here friendship is costly but it is worth it friendship is a gift of god that he has first modeled for us in the gospel is being christ-like period if it's going to be a friendship it, we're going to have it is it's almost like a ministry you know what i mean it's going to be <laughs> yeah. we have to be christ you know what i mean we're going to be christ-like and it's about maturing. It's, it's where we are. Back then in the day, things might have been, you know, I might have had some crazy friendships. But now moving forward, as I grow in Christ and I know who I am in Christ, my friendships are going to be different. That's right. And, and it's honest, let's be real. I'm not going to attract. Everybody going to think I'm like a Jesus freak. You know what I mean? Like they're going to, no, you know. So I think it's also who you attract to be your friend. It's not going to be you know, that rock and roll chick, they're just going to run from me. So it is going to be somebody that God is bringing in at the right time. And it's about serving, mm -hmm. knowing that yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm being the hands and feet. It is like a ministry and, and asking God, how can you use me in this friendship? How can you use me? Yeah. So, yeah. And prayer, like Candace said, I believe that prayer mm -hmm. plays such a big part because as you allow people into your life, the Lord begins to bring them to you in your time of prayer to pray for them, to pray about where the relationship is going, how you can serve and what they may need. And is it a right fit for you and to allow you to know what it's going to cost you and yeah. prepare your heart to be willing to do that because it's right. like okay it is ministry so yeah yeah, yeah. awesome thank you ladies i, I want to do something before we close and candace i want you to do the friendship prayer because you're the prayer girl mm -hmm. but um we're starting a study on monday and this is the book and i would love to give it to someone because it has been gifted by another friend in girl talk i can't see can't can you see That's it now? A beautiful friendship. Yes. Oh, okay. So how are we going to pick tonight, ladies? I kind of know who has the book and who don't have the book from the other page. Um, if you are doing the study and you have not got the book, we start on Monday, June 1st. What it'll be is, it's called the Girl Squad Group. It's a group here on Facebook. We're in this group. Every day I post um, something to go with the reading that we've done. And then I'll ask a question. You'll just engage in it. I come on live on Monday evenings at 6.30 at Zoom like for 30 minutes. And then there's gonna be a couple of smaller groups so we can get to know each other. And then I'm gonna do some Zoom calls throughout the week. But this is the study we start. And if you do not have the book and you're interested in joining us, um, put your name, oh, pick me. me. Pick me. Hmm? I say, oh, pick me, pick me. <laughs> You're so crazy. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And I'm going to let Twyla pick. So, someone's name? Yes, pick they're going to type in just a second. If they do not have the book, you can, don't okay. have the book, and that you are interested in being in the study. And we started on Monday. I will throw it in the mail on tomorrow afternoon, noon-ish, so that you'll have it. 
What time is the study? The study will be up there all day. I try to schedule it so it'll pop out about 3.30 in the morning. It'll just be there for you. So you can come in anytime and engage in it. Looks like everybody has a book, Teresa. I know. <laughs> Christy, so, I do not. I'm on Amazon trying to buy it now. So if you want to pick me, you can. <laughs> but if there's someone that needs a book, I get Myra. it. Myra. Myra. Well, we're going to get Krista a book. And you want to do Myra? She's the first one. Okay, we don't have one. Myra was first, so. Okay. That's what Twyla said. Twyla said. Okay. All righty. I will be here by Sunday. So we'll, we'll prime. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. It was awesome. Thank you. So just so you know, we'll be back here next Friday. Um, I will post during the week what the subject will be about so you can join us in the subject. Um, yay, yes. Can we congratulate Myra? I'm not one. I got to go back. Let's congratulate Myra right in there. Congratulations. Put the thumbs up. Shoot it up. You are welcome. Just send me your address so that I can um, throw it in the mail. I already put the the envelope is really is ready. Like I just needed your address so it'll come. So it will be there for you. But thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. We'll be back here next Friday night at 7.30. Um, the only glitch we had this evening was literally getting on. It was preparing, don't know what that means. Um, so we did have that glitch for a little bit, but thank you so, so much for being here. Continue to share and invite with other women. And um, we're gonna see you next week. Candace is gonna uh, pray us out. Um, you are so welcome. So come back and make sure you join us. Put those, run those babies like they're ragged and then throw them in the bed. Give them some good food and fatten them stomachs up. Throw them in the bed and come join us next Friday night, Kristen. You're doing an awesome job. Know that you're doing an awesome job. Awesome job. Keep being the mom. And remember this, Kristen. You know what? You don't have to be perfect because no. you don't know what you're doing. Every day is a new day. You got twins. That was one you didn't know what you were doing. The second part, every day is a new day with your child, one child, let alone two. So give yourself grace. You're doing the best you can with something you never have gone through. Take the expectation off yourself. Live like it's real. Enjoy every moment with them. Because guess what? They'll be 23 and I'll be 17. I'll be walking out the door telling you, bye, mom, I'm going to do my life. Trust me. That's what's happening to me right now. <laughs> so. Enjoy it. Enjoy every moment with them, but do not stress out. They are they're going to be amazing kids because you're an amazing mom. Okay. All righty. Myra, send me your address. DM me. No tears, Kristen. Love you, girl. Love you, girl. No tears. No tears. I, I remember when I met her right here on Girl Talk. Pregnant woman. Just pregnant woman. Stuck at home on bed rest. And she had a nerd be eating special food. <laughs> <laughs> yep 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 all righty thank you and i don't know i can go if you don't order a book yet um i don't know i, I had several people send me books in the mail if you just give me a chance to check my p.o box tomorrow i will let you know <laughs> and i'll reach out to you too because people sent me books and i didn't know they were coming so all righty let's do this Candace, I'm ready. I'll be quiet. All now. right, ladies, we love you. Thanks for hanging out with us for like two hours. Women, we can share <laughs> right? <on> Friday night. <laughs> my, my sister friends, that's how we roll Ooh. on a Friday night. <laughs> oh, yes. Father God, thank you for opportunity. Thank you for the fact that we can gather together on a Friday night and just be real. To be real women with real issues who are walking this real life and love a real God. Father, we are so grateful. And for each one of my sisters on this call tonight, for each one of our sisters that were watching with us tonight and those who will watch later, thank you for friendship. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you have designed us to do life together. You have fashioned us, created us, molded us, sealed us in relationship, a relationship that goes through peaks and valleys, a relationship that is founded on intimacy, on love, with time, with compassion, that we get 
to do this life together. So for every sister here that is looking for a friendship, in a friendship, has, has had a bad friendship, has had great friendship, may they just learn and, and sit with those experiences knowing that it is an opportunity to continue to grow with you. And we bless the sister right now who was watching, who feels like she doesn't have a friend. You just made 35 sisters who are gonna be all in your business for the rest of your life. And we love you. We love you. Reach you. out, come back, know that you are not alone. Your father, your creator just handed you relationship. Please receive it, sister. You are worth it. You are lovely. You are amazing. And it is yours. Thank you for this time tonight, Father. I just want to seal all my sisters and who you are, the gifts that you have given them, the fears, the worries, the dreams, everything that they are growing in you. We seal them in your love tonight as they mm -hmm. lay their head down their pillow. We bless every house that is represented, every child and every relationship that is represented by us tonight. Father, we give it all to you and we are so grateful for your love. We love you and we praise you and we seal this in your son's name. Amen. 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 One thing before we go, I forgot. In the morning at 7.30, I'm like gonna like jump into the bed. Like, but in the morning at 7.30, I was still doing coffee. So come join me for coffee inside the Girl Talk group. 7.30, I'm here for coffee. So come join me. If not, if you want to go for prayer. Uh, Krista has prayer at 7 a.m. Go to Krista Pettiford's page. I didn't say like her. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they have prayer with her church at 7.30, her women's ministry. Go join them. Um, Krista leads an amazing prayer time then. But if you are up early and you want to join them, and then just pop over and join me at 7.30 for coffee, okay? Love you guys. I'm going to use my sister friend's cup in the morning. And then Girl Talk does oh, yeah. have its have its cup coming out. So get ready. Uh, I'm hoping to post everything tomorrow so that you can purchase a Girl Talk uh, sister uh, sister friend mug. But it won't be like this one. Okay? Sorry, guys. We love you, but no. We're special. I'm sorry. That's horrible. We just talked about friends. But we're sisters. It's okay. Right. If I can't poke a little fun. Right. And I just want to tell you guys, Krista, Candace, and Twyla, like, thank you, like, so, so much. From the bottom of my heart, I love you guys. Thank You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You. 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 It's bye. a blessing. Okay, bye, bye, -bye. guys. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, it ended. Goodbye. End of the meeting.